as we get ready to get into the word, and hear the word, and last Bob Lang and some of our have our scripture reading this morning. So they would come and read two scriptures for us. Yes, please. Yes. Please stand. Transfiguration, our first reading, Bob read, and Jesus was turned, turned himself to a white light, revealed his supernatural nature. With Peter, James, and John there, we saw it, talking to Moses and Elijah. How is the tr transfiguration like the secret plan? The transfiguration, how is it like the secret plan? We're continuing on our theme of like the secret. How is it like the secret plan? And how does the transfiguration <coughs> connect to Jesus' prayer in John 17? How does the transfiguration connect to that prayer that we be one? One with the Father. One with each other. How do they connect? Let me just toss out five thoughts. Number one, Jesus literally became light. He literally lit the mountain. If you were looking up, whether it's Mount Tabor or Mount Hermon, Whichever one, if you're looking up and you could have seen bright light of Peter, James, and John. So he lit, he showed his secret nature by, by the light. Then he talked with Moses and Elijah about his decease, which means about his death. He's talking to Moses and Elijah about he's going to die. The secret plan of his atoning death is being revealed to Peter, James, and John. Then he's revealing that he's going to create the church. Did you notice the main people, the main humans in the scriptures? Moses, Elijah, Peter. Of course, you have James and John. Moses is the law. Elijah is the prophets. And Peter is the church, the new covenant. So he's connecting, he's revealing things, all of these two scriptures. Fourthly, Jesus will be transfigured in the church. He'll be transfigured here in his people. I don't know about that. How can you see that? How can you measure that? Well, number five, this light, this glow, this glory, this love will be the most evident in the gathered church. You can worship at home. You can worship in creation. You can worship other places. But Jesus is most present in the gathered church, the worshiping church. All right, that's, well, that's pretty meaty for, we're only at 9 o'clock in the morning now, or some of us are just waking up. Uh, it's pretty meaty. Uh, why, why is all this going on? Why does Jesus want us to be one with the Father? Why does he want us to be one with each other? 
He wants us to be one that the world may believe. He says that. They may believe that God sent him. If they believe God sent him, they better believe he's the Son of God and Savior. That the world may believe, that the world may know, that the world may be saved. That's the whole purpose, that the world may be saved. Now, I wonder now, is anybody in here on Facebook? Raise your hand if you're on Facebook. Okay. I didn't realize Facebook did this, but they make little slideshows for you. Hi, Rachel has a little slideshow. She put it, she posted it on her, her news feed. And so, I don't know, a computer or somebody at Facebook has to sit down with 50 million clients and make these slideshows. I'm not sure who does it. But they made a nice little slideshow for Rachel. Mike Aiken's got one. Raise your hand if you see Mike Aiken's slideshow. That's all part of that. Sure did. All right. We, we like to get together. Now we can get together with pictures and with words on the internet or on our phones. We've been getting together for thousands of years with all those things. Uh, in the 40s and 50s, we started watching each other on something called the television. Raise your hand if you're alive in 1950. All right. Raise your hand if you had a television in 1950. Oh, 1960. Okay. 1970, I'm in there on 1960. I was just a baby. All right. We watched TV. Now, this may not be a, a hard question, but what do you think is the most watched television show in America? What is the most watched show in America? NCIS. NCIS. Well, <laughs> that, that's a popular one. <laughs> that they are the most watched. Okay, that, okay, currently, maybe currently. As the first series, the number one series was MASH, but the most watched show is the Super Bowl. 21 times the most watched television show is the Super Bowl. 114 million people saw the halftime show last year. It peaked at 120.8 million. And I, I don't know how they measure that, but they did estimate it. Someone else said there was 160 million that watched it. 120 million Americans, that's over a third of our population, will be watching television tonight, watching this game, as Denver and the Carolinas go against each other. And not only will we watch this show, now I read some percentages on why do you watch the Super Bowl, like 78% want to see football. That's, it's a football game. But then some like the halftime show, some like the commercials, and some just like to get together. So, we like to be one. People, people like to be one. We love to be one. Well, actually, people long to be one. We like to get together. We love it. I'll, 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 I'll tell you this because Sunday's already started. Karen and I are going to take a little trip, leaving after church today. We're going to go down to the Smokies. And I've already started scouting out restaurants. Did you know that the Greenbrier restaurant is closed tonight? They close on Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> we need a good place to eat tonight. But they're closed. Someone has estimated that Americans will buy 8.6 million new televisions for tonight. We will, we will spend, we will buy 20.9 million new jerseys apparel for the game, jerseys, hats, whatever. We'll be dressed for the game. This is a big event. This, this basically brings America together. The biggest event. So, we get together for different reasons. We, we watch the teams, we watch the halftime show. I got curious about the halftime show because football is football. Football doesn't send a message either way. Football sends a message. You play, play the fundamentals, hit hard, throw right, you know, tackle, look right at their waist. That's got fundamentals in football. So football doesn't have a big message either way. But the halftime shows might. And so I got curious about the halftime shows. So I looked up who's going to be on the halftime show tonight. 
Coldplay is the band. Beyonce is the singer. Bruno Mars is singing. So I looked up some of Coldplay's songs, what people were hoping they might sing. One of the songs was Clocks. We're hoping they might sing Clocks tonight. So I looked up the words and listened to them. One of the lyrics goes, Confusion never stops. Closing walls and ticking clocks. Well, that's not a relaxing song. <laughs> it sounds like the end time is coming. Y'all better be ready. Uh, don't know what they're going to do. Hope it's a lot of fun. Last year, Katy Perry had the big audience. 118 million viewers saw her in Phoenix. 2014 was Bruno Mars. 2013, Beyonce. It's amazing. She's back again three years later. She must have done a great job. 2012 was Madonna. 2011 was Black Eyed Peas. I don't really know that. Uh, 2011 was The Who. Apparently they did Pinball Wizard. I thought that was the Elton John song, but anyway, it's okay. 2009 was Bruce Springsteen. I was raised in the East Coast. I'm familiar with Bruce Springsteen. He's from New Jersey. And he did 10th Avenue Freeze Out. He did Born to Run. He did I'm Working on a Dream. He did Glory Days. But you know what he didn't do? Biggest event in America. And he doesn't even do Born in the USA. Bruce, what's the matter with you? And of course, he didn't do Born Again in the U.S. Could you imagine that? If 120 million Turk people saw Bruce Springsteen convert to Christianity and sings Born Again in the U.S.A. What a platform to like the plan of God. What inspiration did they bring? Well, I watched you know, one, one of Bruce's show in 09. I mean, you got the band, you got the lights, you got the pyrotechnics. You know, they shoot smoke and flame in the air now. But that's okay, because uh, Skillet does the same thing down in Gatlinburg. Uh, I, like, I like the pyrotechnics. But what does it all end up in? What does it do? At the end of the day, 100,000 100, people dance to a song, the clocks are ticking. I don't, I don't know that it does a lot. It doesn't bring glory to God. I looked at the set list that Beyonce did three years ago. No songs about God. I don't see, uh, I don't see uh, uh, Matt Redmond up there singing. Or I don't see any of our popular Christian groups being invited to the Super Bowl. I don't hear anybody singing, he looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I mean, if you sang out the Super Bowl, it would be a conversions everywhere. People, they're not looking for a good time together. They're looking for Jesus. They're looking for John 17, that they might be one with you, Father. We're all looking for Jesus. We're looking for love. But sometimes we look in the wrong places. We need to look and find it in Jesus. So the Super Bowl tonight won't be an evangelistic event unless you make it one, which I totally encourage you to do. Invite people over, hang out with them, enjoy them, love them. And that doesn't mean you have to take the Bible out and read the gospel at halftime, if you want to. But build loving relationships. That spreads the gospel. So it's going to be up to the church to make the gospel known. That's the secret plan. The secret plan is the church is going to make the plan of salvation known. Not the church of Scientology, not the church of Latter-day Saints, but the church of Jesus Christ. The biblical, blood-bought, resurrection-powered, spirit-infilled church of Jesus the Protestant, the Catholic, and the Pentecostal, all of us together that believe that Jesus is the Son of God, crucified at Calvary, resurrected the third, on the third day, and seated at the right hand of the Father. That's how we're saved. That kind of grace. Now, I've got a little outline. It's in the bulletin. It's on the projection. And we've talked about the secret place, secret fears, the secret needs, the secret schemes. There's a secret plan now. And the first part of the plan was the secret church. Secret church. No one knew that Jesus would create the church with Jews and Gentiles. No one knew that. This secret oneness with God. This secret Holy Spirit given. No one knew that. It, it, it's, just, it's a surprise. And when people finally understand, like, wow, that's so, that's so real and close. So I've got three things I want to talk to you about how we can be one with God and with each other. How we can fulfill Jesus' prayer in John 17. Not that we do it. God does it. Jesus prayed to the Father. The Holy Spirit carries it out. But there's at least three things that will bring us together. And the first one I want to bring out is shared faith. Shared faith. Most everyone in this room believes that Jesus Christ 
is the one and the only Savior of the world. We believe in his life, born in Bethlehem, raised, his death, his resurrection. We believe these things actually happened like the Bible says they did. And then we believe that his spirit, miraculously and supernaturally and secretly, somehow is in us and has brought us together today to declare how great is our God. To declare this is amazing grace. And asking God, Lord, remember me. Don't forget me. Don't leave me out. Bring me close. Our shared faith. Secondly, we have shared experiences. Shared experiences. And this, if I passed out paper and gave you a pop quiz and said, write down three experiences you had last week, you could write down a hundred experiences. We're talking shared experiences with God and with believers. And I'll tell you about one. Two believers. Our lady, Gerald, Gerald, would you come down here? I need to get you down here more. We missed you at the offering, and, and I should have had microphones for our scripture <coughs> readers. I'll make notes of all these things next time. The service will be almost perfect. Because uh, I'm bringing you down here for a reason. All right? Stand up in front of people. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> Especially when people can see it. Now, Wednesday, we learned Calvin Aaron went back in the hospital Tuesday. And our older brother had a blood clot in his lung. Dangerous, of course. But not surprising when you have cancer. There's, there's a mass in the abdomen. They're going to do some testing to try to find out what's going on. He went to the hospital. So Wednesday, after the prayer meeting, I went to visit with him. And, and Aline was there. And Ned was there. And Calvin was there. He looked good. He was very, really, like, very alert. And so I was visiting with him for a while, found out the report, the diagnosis. And then in walk Gerald Coomer and Rick Wilson. My right and left hands for membership care, our lay leader and our membership care team leader, walk into the hospital room. And so the three of us are in there. As soon as Gerald walked in, Calvin lit up. And Gerald, what did he do with his finger towards you? That's it. And that's it. The Calvin Aaron to Gerald Coomer sign. And, and didn't have to say a word. And drew his friend Gerald close to him. Then in our visit, I start to find out why they're close. Years ago, when Gerald had black hair, and, and Calvin and Gerald went cave. They went cave. Not one of these stand up mammoth caves. One of these crawl on your belly, get dirty and nasty and wet, low caves, like coal miners go in. And they went deep. Where, where, where did you all go? Lens Lens Lensmore. And they went in together. And they had that experience and other experiences. And they had those memories all their life. Their shared experience brought them together. Gerald looks up to Calvin. I know he does. I do too. Many of you do. Because he has shared with us. There are others that you, we could name that have shared for some time. But I want you to know that Peter, James, and John had a shared experience with Jesus on that mountain. And from then on, first they couldn't tell about it until his death and resurrection. Then they could always tell, do you remember that time on the mountain? When they doubt, is this really for real? Remember that time on the mountain? Jesus became white light. Of course it's real. Heaven's real. He's the Son of God. He's supernatural. Oh, thank you. They had a shared experience. And it helps them be one. And then, thank you, Gerald. You might as well just sit down here because I need you to help serve communion too. <laughs> uh, there's other experiences. Let me put a picture. Uh, Clint, if you can go to the picture of Patty Fleur and Joanne Montgomery. Patty and Joanne went, and I don't know if they've actually gone shopping together before. Joanne, where are you? Have y'all ever gone shopping? Like buggy, luggy? <laughs> No, I didn't, I didn't think so. But they did this week to get some clothing for one of the, the uh, facilities in our area where the boys get some clothing. And so, the, so go ahead and put the picture up if you can get to it out of the sermon. Now, the uh, one before it, the, the clothing, that's it. There they are. Joanne's wondering about this whole thing in the picture. <laughs> 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 who, who, who put me up to this? <laughs> 
But Joanne is Ray Flores' assistant. She's the assistant service outreach team leader. So it's perfect for her to go. She's very willing. Patty had a heart and I didn't do this. And so there's all kinds of clothing given to some of the boys you know, that actually come to church here. Uh, and, and so they have a shared experience. And after their experience driving out of the facility, dropping off the clothes, God gave them a little wink. The next picture, but if you could put up the rainbow, Patty took the picture of that rainbow just as she left the facility where they dropped the clothes. You know, God is so good to us. God is sharing in it too. It's Jesus and Joanne and Patty serving together. And, if, if, and I don't have a whole lot of time. I'm going to jump right to uh, third piece of shared celebrations. Shared celebrations. Kayla, are you here? Kayla, you were in the paper, full color trends. Wow. Congratulations on being our homecoming queen. Y'all give her a round of applause. celebrate with you that. We know there's a big event coming this summer. We heard there's some more news of some more big, another big event coming. I just heard some news this morning there's another big event coming. And so it's just some really good things happening in the life of Trinity. If you need to know these things, just kind of ask around. The women have already talked at the well this morning. They've already spread around. But, uh, so you just need to know. Shared celebrations bring us together. And that's what church is. So you might ask, why should I go to church today? I can just take in a sermon at home. Yeah, you can. It's a one-way message. That recorded service comes into your eyes, but your eyes never have contact with that preacher. You never greet those people. They never know who you are. They never know what you're going through. It just doesn't work. We come together. We come together in Jesus and we celebrate His gift of life, eternal life, His forgiveness. We bring our struggles, even to the altar sometimes. Uh, Ray brought Richard last Sunday at the late service, and we prayed for Richard. And we bring it, and we care for each other. Shared celebrations make us one. More than one of you has told me, when you miss on Sunday, something's missing. You're just not right. And I agree, you're just not right. Okay, I got five suggestions for Lent. Wes and I haven't even had time to talk about Lent, but bang, Lent starts Wednesday. Early Lent, early Easter, February 10th, Ash Wednesday. Sometimes we give up things to help us remember the cross. Sometimes we commit to things to remember the cross. There is a sheet in your bulletin about gospel reading, gospel chapter a day for 40 days. Sundays excluded. Maybe you want to do that. There's a sheet in your bulletin about praying for five people. On my desk is my yellow sheet from 2014 and my yellow sheet from 2015. Off, that, off those yellow sheets, one person has come to Christ. He's in the kingdom now. And so I keep praying that God will reach these people. Would you pray for five people during Lent daily that God would bring them into the kingdom or if there's another concern? And then, real quick, we've got to, we've got to get to know each other better. So you've already greeted each other, so I didn't get to tell you this ahead of time, but after church, maybe you could greet someone you haven't met. Do you know that we have, we have five Roberts Four Brendas, four Charleses, three Rachels. I want you to find out who they are. List off all five Charleses, all four, all four Brendas. Uh, at least three Brendas are here. I've already seen them. Okay. Then would you participate in another activity at church besides Sunday morning? Would you come on a Sunday night? Would you come to the War Room movie? Would you come Wednesday night? Would you come to something else? Then thirdly. Would you get together with other Trinity folks outside of church, which you ought to do? Some of you golf, some of you shop, some of you eat, some of you cook. That's great. Also, would you consider getting together with somebody in the church that you've never gotten together with before? Joanne and Patty, they went shopping. Yeah. Would you consider getting together with someone you haven't done with before? And then lastly, on the prayer list are 20 people who are shut in. And probably 18 of them are in our community. A couple of them live away. During Lent, would you visit a couple of these people? Betty and I visited Irene Gross last week. And it was just great to sit down and talk with Irene. And Irene can't get out. She can hardly walk. And we have our, our senior members that would love to talk with our junior members. They, they need you. We're all here together having a great time. But they're not. They're not. 
And uh, praise God, we're growing, but I, I want to get to them, but I can't get to them as much as they need. So the body, would you all help me reach our shut-in our shut-in folks and nursing home folks? If you need to know who they are, Gerald or, or Betty or Rick or Tanya, they can connect you. They can give you info, phone numbers, addresses. They'll go with you if you don't know them. I'll go with you if you don't know them. All of this to, to summarize on John 17, 21. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us. One in us that the world may believe that you sent me. And that scripture says the Holy Trinity is one. The church is to be one. So that the world may be one to Christ. 